Today we're going to be brewing a Dark Saison, which is a really cool subset of the Saison style of beer. Saison is a style of beer that is wide open for interpretation and creativity. They can be dark, they can be amber, they can be light, they can be imperial strength or regular strength or session strength. They can have tons of additional ingredients added to them or you can make them just plain old water, yeast, malt, and hops. Uh, there's a lot you can do with the style and it's a lot of fun to play around with. As uh, the winter season is winding down and we are transitioning into spring, I thought it would be really, really cool to try out a dark Saison. This is close to the style of Beer de Garde. However, it's a little bit different because a Beer de Garde is a lot more clean in its fermentation character, um, although the grist is gonna be very similar. So this is gonna be a beer that has loads of fermentation character in it. The Saison yeast is very expressive, it's peppery, um, it's very phenolic, and it's going to give some pretty cool flavor notes. On top of that cool yeast characteristic though, we're gonna layer in some dry and spicy dark malts, as well as a little bit of like a dark fruit characteristic, and maybe some raisin and some plum, and we'll see how that works, on top of a pretty standard Saison base. I'm really excited to see how this beer turns out. My intention with this beer is to bridge the winter and spring seasons perfectly uh, to give us a highly drinkable, refreshing, yet still substantial beer uh, as we bridge into the spring season. So before we jump into the recipe, I just want to say uh, thank you to a couple organizations for helping make the video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, they provided the ingredients for this batch of beer. And secondly, Clawhammer Supply. They manufacture the system I'll be brewing today's beer on, which is the 10 gallon, 240 volt system, but they have plenty of other sizes and voltages available. Check out their website. With this beer, we're gonna be starting out with a base of Belgian Pilsner malt. Um, I do recommend Belgian Pilsner malt for the terroir, but it is uh, perfectly acceptable to make this beer with any other Pilsner malt. I'll be using Franco Belges. And then we're gonna to add to that for a little bit of malt character that's pretty classic in a Saison, a pound and a half of Vienna malt. The add of Vienna malt's gonna add a little bit of additional flavor and a little bit of additional breadiness. And then lastly, for your classic Saison base, we're adding in one pound of white wheat malt, which is going to give us not only spectacular head retention ideally, but also is going to kind of puff up the body a little bit. But now we're gonna add some specialty ingredients that are gonna take this from a regular Saison and turn it into a dark Saison. The first of which is D45 candy syrup, one pound of that. The candy sugar is going to get this beer to attenuate further. It's gonna dry the beer out, which is highly important in a Saison style. You don't want that final gravity to be very high. You want it to be low and very dry. This enhances the drinkability of the Saison and it's a characteristic of the style. You can't have a Saison not be dry. The D45 candy syrup is an amber colored candy syrup. So not only are we getting that simple sugar into the grist to help it ferment a bit drier, but we are also going to be adding in some flavors with that, which should be reminiscent of some light fruits, uh, maybe some golden raisins as well. Now I could certainly use a darker one like a D90 or even a D180, and that would get the color contribution in there, but that would also deliver a lot different flavors. Those are more of your classic like Belgian double, Belgian quad type flavors, the really intense dark fruits and dark caramel. That's not what I want in this beer. I want this beer to be dark, but to have a little bit of a dark malt spice to it. And that could get in the way. So a lighter candy syrup, I think, is the right answer here. So to add that dark character and to add a little bit of zip to this, we're adding half a pound of chocolate rye from Vireman. This is a suggestion that I picked up from some research on the internet. Not my idea, but I wanna try it out. Chocolate rye is a cool roasted malt that's similar to a chocolate malt in that way, but also comes from rye. So you get a little bit different character from it. And rye is something that shines in a Saison. Adding to this another half a pound of Special B from Dingamans. This is gonna give us that dark raisin character um, without too much of the dark caramel that you would get from a dark candy syrup. I'm hoping that the combination of those two dark malts right there gives us a nice dark amber color and a nice zippy flavor. Um, should be pretty fun. For the hops in this beer, um, it's going to be somewhat hoppy, uh, but not too crazy intense. Saisons can be hoppy or they can be malty. So there's a wide variety here, but what I'll be going for is a bunch of noble hops that'll help accentuate the spice characteristics. So we're gonna bitter with an ounce and a quarter of sots, um, but that's going in as a first wort hop instead of a 60 minute bittering addition. That's certainly something that's debated within the homebrew community. I don't really care. I think it has a subtle impact on the bitterness and I'm doing it because of that. So uh, we're adding in an ounce and a quarter, uh, basically as soon as the mash is finished, as I'm doing the mash out, and then we'll slowly ramp that up to a boil and uh, we'll carry on from there. 
I'm adding another ounce and a quarter of sots at 20 minutes for some flavor. And then we're adding in uh, one ounce of tetnong at 10 minutes. Tetnong is a spicy noble hop that's typically found in German wheat beers. Um, and it's partially responsible for some of the flavors that you get from those beers. So I'm gonna try that at 10 minutes and then we'll do one more ounce at zero. So there's gonna be a decent amount of flavor hops in this beer that I hope are going to jive nicely with the spicy dark characteristic. For the yeast in this beer, I'm gonna be using a really fun Saison strain that's not my typical and one that I have had a hard time getting a hold of as of late, but uh, have been able to finally secure a couple packets of it. And that is why he's 3726 which is the Farmhouse Ale. Everyone's pretty familiar with the classic Belgian Saison strain, which is Y-East 3724, which is the Brasserie DuPont strain. Uh, this is a different Belgian Saison strain. Y-East 3726 is sourced from the Brasserie de Blaugy. The Blaugy is a little bit different of a character than the DuPont strain. Personally, the beers that I've had uh, from DuPont versus de Blaugy. De Blaugy is a little bit more fruity and a little bit more expressive in the way that the yeast comes forward. Of course, that's within the grand scheme of Saisons, which are pretty expressive beers across the board. So de Blaugy, I'm hoping to get a little bit more of a different character out of it, but still a very satisfying Saison character. And it's a yeast I haven't used before, so that's always a lot of fun. Theoretically, this particular yeast should not have the dreaded Saison DuPont stall, which is where the DuPont strain specifically will stop fermenting at like, uh, about 30 or 40 percent attenuation for like a week or two uh, and then suddenly start up again especially if you crank that heat up really high so um, hopefully that doesn't happen and the fermentation is a bit easier to manage in that case for the water profile on this beer we're going to be setting up a profile that uh, it kind of accentuates the dry finish on this beer so with a roughly two to one sulfate to chloride ratio we're going to actually increase the perception of a dry finish. It should help some of the kind of toastier, spicier pieces of the dark malts come forward uh, a little bit easier. So that water profile is 59 parts per million of calcium, 10 parts per million of magnesium, eight parts per million of sodium, 52 parts per million of chloride, 113 parts per million of sulfate, and 16 parts per million of bicarbonate. And in order to get that water profile, I'll be adding to eight gallons of reverse osmosis water, three grams of calcium chloride, three grams of Epsom salt, and four grams of gypsum. For the mash in this beer, we are mashing this one nice and low, 148 degrees Fahrenheit for about 60 minutes. I actually have the data myself today. I don't have to take care of my kid today, so I can actually brew a full brew day today instead of doing the typical overnight mash method that I've been working with. That being said, an overnight mash is a fantastic option for this beer because it will help attenuate it a little bit further, especially if you don't keep that heat constant on it. Um, but that being said, we're sticking with 148 degrees for about 60 minutes, and that should get the job done just fine. I'm really excited to brew this beer. Uh, this is a recipe I've had going in my head for a long time, but I have yet to brew it. So I'm really, really pumped to see what it turns out like. Um, it should be one of the more creative beers that I've done in a while. And it should be made even much more fun by the addition of such a cool yeast. So without further ado, let's get brewing. I started out by adding eight gallons of reverse osmosis water into my 10 gallon, 240 volt claw hammer supply system and started to heat it up to the mash temperature of about 148 degrees Fahrenheit. As I was doing this, I measured all my water salts out and added those into the water as it heated up and I also milled out my grain and got that ready to go. Once I hit the mash temperature, I mashed in with the entirety of my grain bill with the exception of course of the D45 candy syrup as that would be added during the boil. I mixed everything up thoroughly, I broke up any dough clumps I saw, and I let the mash recirculate for about 10 minutes before pulling a pH measurement and found it to be exactly on target at 5.2 or so. I made no further adjustments for pH and I left the mash to continue uh, doing its thing for another 50 minutes until I completed my 60 minute mash. I quickly raised up to about 170 degrees for a mash out rest, uh, which took about 15 minutes, and then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for another another 15 minutes. As soon as I had pulled out the grain basket, I started heating up to a temperature right below boiling, and I also added in my first wort hops at this time, which was an ounce and a quarter of sots. I let the grain basket drain for another about 15 minutes or so, and then I carried on to a full-on boil, marking a 60-minute boil. At the 20-minute mark of that boil, I added an ounce and a quarter of sots again, and then 10 minutes later at the 10 minute mark, I added one ounce of tetanong and I also added a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. 
At 10 minutes, I also added in my one pound of D45 candy syrup, thoroughly stirring that up, keeping it from scorching and getting it fully dissolved. 10 minutes later, I ended the boil and I also added my one ounce of tetanong at zero minutes. As soon as the boil ended, I started a whirlpool by turning on the pump for about five minutes and then turning it off for about 10 minutes and letting the uh, hops and other true pile up in the center of the kettle before transferring through my counterflow chiller and chilling at the same time in a single pass going into my Spike CF5. As soon as I got the temperature of the wort down to about 70 degrees, I pulled a sample for an original gravity measurement, finding it to be about 1069, which was a little bit lower than anticipated, but not much. Uh, and then at this point, I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. In a rather spur of the moment decision, I decided to leave this one to open ferment. So instead of putting an airlock in the uh, top port there, I actually just put a piece of tin foil over the top of it and left it open fermenting. So for the fermentation on this beer, this can be done a number of different ways. If you want the Saison to be expressive, to be really, really intense in its flavor, very dry, I would actually recommend fermenting this, especially if you're using a Belgian Saison yeast, at a really high temperature of like 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only should that avoid any sort of stalls, but it will get you the most expressive character that this yeast is capable of producing. That being said, some Saisons actually do really, really well at a colder temperature, something more like 65 to 75 degrees. Um, so colder is relatively speaking, of course. That is gonna get you a slightly cleaner flavor, but it will also allow the phenolics that the yeast produce to shine a bit more. When you ferment at the higher temperature, the yeast will still produce plenty of phenolics, uh, but it will also just kick out a ton more esters, which will cover up the flavor of the phenolics if there's a lot. So by fermenting at a slightly lower temperature, you're actually getting a bit more of that kind of spicy characteristic. You're getting a bit more of the black pepper uh, characteristic that this yeast is known for um, without so much of the fruit. I think for a darker version of this beer, that is the way to go. So I'm gonna be taking this one and fermenting it at about 70 degrees. And then if it's not really moving along all that well, then I will anticipate maybe bumping the temperature up to about 75 degrees towards the end of the fermentation. Regardless of what happens, I will be raising the temperature at the end of the fermentation because we want to ensure this dries out. Um, and the fermentation could take maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on how long it wants to take to really fully finish. Saison strains are notorious for taking a long time to ferment. Saison strains are diastatic as positive. And what that means is that it has a gene in it called STA1 that enables it to ferment stuff that other yeasts are not really capable of fermenting. Um, it takes a much longer time to break these things down and ferment them, but it will do it over time. And therefore, Saisons are notorious for having bottle bombs and um, other situations take place where the fermentations continued much further than anticipated in the bottle over time. So if you are bottle conditioning your beers, as Saisons typically traditionally are bottle conditioned, uh, then I would really recommend waiting a long time before you bottle that beer. I highly recommend using high pressure Belgian or champagne style bottles uh, if you're gonna bottle condition these Saisons. You can do it in a keg, that's totally fine. Um, obviously kegs can handle the pressure just fine. The bottom line here is just don't rush the fermentation. Give it a couple weeks. It might appear to be done really, really fast in like a week, but give it another week or two to condition and to be sure that you're hitting that final gravity. So I just recommend take your time with the fermentation, let it do its thing over several weeks because it will take that long for the diastatic is to do its job. Um, if you're confirming your final gravity, I would recommend waiting at least a week before you take another measurement to see if it hasn't dropped any further, because it's entirely likely that that has taken place. So if you do end up experiencing the dreaded Saison stall, I have a couple pieces of advice for that. I've actually only had this happen to me one time, and I've brewed plenty of Saisons, especially with the notorious DuPont yeast. 
The best way to avoid this in general is to give the yeast plenty of nutrients and a high temperature. If you're fermenting it already at a relatively high temperature and you can get yourself past about 1020 to 1030 specific gravity um, before it starts to slow down, then do it. Also, don't add additional head pressure to this beer whatsoever. Saison yeast hates pressure. In fact, it's actually best to open ferment this if you have the ability to do so. And that can be as simple as just putting um, a little piece of tin foil over the top of the airlock port instead of putting an airlock in the beer. This yeast is very sensitive and um, additional head pressure can cause it to stall. If it does happen to you for whatever reason, try kicking that temperature up to as high as 85 degrees. The yeast can actually handle that temperature and in fact, it may be wanting more heat in general. Um, and also if you have a conical or you have the ability to rouse the yeast with CO2, I'd recommend doing that. Get it back up into circulation. Sometimes it can find additional sugar to get going off of again and it will finish out that fermentation. But if all else fails, hold that temperature up to about 85 degrees and let it stay there for another week or two. And I think you'll see fermentation kick off again if that's the case. This happens pretty frequently, so don't panic if it happens to you. It's a totally normal part of using a Saison yeast. So alternative yeast for this beer are gonna include the DuPont strain, Yeast 3724, which is the only one that should experience the stall, theoretically. There's also Yeast 3711, the French Saison, which is a reliable workhorse and a monster attenuator. There's also a couple dry recommendations I have from Lalaman. Of course, there's Bell Saison, which is pretty well known, but Lalaman also has a farmhouse style yeast as well. So recommend either one of those if you're looking for a dry option. Fermentus actually has a bunch of options, um, but my real recommendation would be WB06. BE134 is still an option and it is used plenty of times, but it's way too phenolic for my tastes. I don't know if WB06 is the isostatic as positive, but every time I've seen people use it, it's dropped their final gravity way farther than expected. And um, it tends to kind of give that Saison-like peppery note. So it very well may be a Saison yeast, um, even though it's labeled as a wheat beer yeast. There's plenty of equivalent offerings from other yeast manufacturers as well. Just choose a Saison strain that makes the most sense for you based on what you want to get out of the beer. And uh, treat it accordingly. Sometimes these things take a little bit more care in the fermentation, uh, but they will be worth it, especially if you give them the time to do what they need to do. So to recap, what I'll be doing is fermenting this one at about 70 degrees uh, for about two to three weeks. And I will bump the fermentation temperature up to about 75 degrees by the end of the process uh, to get that nice dry finish. Once I've confirmed that final gravity, I'll package and we'll get this thing carbonated up and we'll see what happens with that. So. I'll see you guys in several weeks. Until then, cheers. Fermentation for this beer took a very long time, as was anticipated. The primary stage of fermentation getting us down to a gravity of about 10.12 to 10.13 did not take long at all, only about a week, um, but that was certainly not the end of fermentation. Fermentation, as you can see from this chart, continued for another four weeks, uh, and that was the secondary diastaticus phase. I had this beer in the fermenter for just about a full month before reaching the actual final gravity of 10.08, uh, which is a bit higher than I actually anticipated. I thought it was going to go a bit drier than this. However, when you have a dark saison with all these specialty malts in it, 10.08 is actually still pretty dry, and it's still within style guidelines, so I took it. I transferred it into a keg and let it condition at room temperature to see if it could squeak out any more gravity points, but it did not. Uh, however, the flavor did clean up quite a bit during this process. The beer was tasting absolutely fantastic, and so I couldn't wait any longer. I put it into the kegerator, carbonated it up with forced carbonation to a pretty high level, and got it ready to drink. The beer is called Au Voix L'Hiver, and it comes in at 8.2% ABV and about 29 IBUs.
for the color of the beer, it's a really nice dark reddish brown color, um, very similar to the color of the Dunkel that I made, although a hair lighter, and actually it's not clear. Um, it's got a slight haze to it, although that might drop out after some time in the kegerator as it effectively will lager in this case. There are a few red highlights that come through, which is quite nice. The head on the beer is pouring a tan color. Um, it has really good construction and buildup at first, however it actually doesn't stick around as long as I was hoping it would, and I think that might be a byproduct of not using a step mash for this particular beer. I was kind of hoping the wheat malt would carry me through, but I don't think it was quite enough, and perhaps should have added some flaked wheat in there instead. When the head falls, it does leave a really nice lacing on the glass, and it also still leaves a good layer on top of the surface of the beer throughout the entire drinking session. All right, so now let's go in for aroma. Oh my gosh. This beer smells amazing. I just get loads of like bubble gum and the spicy clove you get out of Saison yeast off of this. And then there's a really nice note of a darker caramel, like a nice candy sugar note. It's, it's really in there. It's, getting the, it's got that same aroma quality you get out of a Belgian dark strong ale. You're getting that like nice floral raisiny kind of soda like smell out of it that's really really nice. But next let's go in for mouthfeel. Mm. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. So this beer feels super dry. I think I nailed that part. Even though it's 10.08 on paper, um, which is actually not really all that dry in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're talking about saisons, it's actually, it, it tastes remarkably dry. And there's a lot of things that contribute to that. But it has that very, very crisp dry finish that is accentuated, I think, mostly by the water profile. And then you're definitely getting um, a little bit of an accentuation of it with the roasted malts, the uh, chocolate rye specifically giving you that little bit of spice too. It's nice. It's really nice. As is standard for a Saison, I carbonated this to a pretty high level. It makes it a little bit tough to pour sometimes, but it's worth it because what it does is that extra carbonation really, um, it makes that dry finish even drier feeling. Uh, it also really has a ton of expression in bringing flavors and aromas out of the beer, expressing them. Um, and then you get that like kind of very sharp tongue tickling carbonation character that is uh, just like the bow on top of everything. It really makes this beer quite nice, quite lively, uh, is really the right word for it. Uh, and it does help its drinkability a little bit, I think, as well. Because this is an 8% beer, and it's also one that has a lot of malt flavor in it, a lot of significant flavor. At the end of the day, though, it doesn't feel like an 8%er, which is what's really important with these types of beer. All right, so now let's talk about flavor, because this beer is absolutely loaded with it. This is a fantastic beer. It has so much individual character to it that makes it very different from a beer to guard, which might be its closest relative, um, and a, also a Belgian double. So the key differences between this and a beer to guard would typically be the yeast choice. Beer de Garde is made with a much less expressive yeast. You typically want a little bit cleaner of yeast flavor on them. Uh, and as far as doubles go, this has actually got some quite uncharacteristic flavors for a double. You're getting a little tinge of that roasted malt character in here, and it's definitely a lot more peppery. That yeast contribution, again, being a big characteristic difference there. A Trappist yeast is gonna be a lot more estery, giving you more fruity character, and a Saison yeast is gonna be a lot more peppery or uh, phenolic, giving you a little bit more clove type character. And that's really the biggest yeast thing I get out of this. I get bubblegum for your ester, but no fruits. Um, maybe there's a hint of like a, a rosy character. Maybe there's a hint of like a white wine, perhaps. Um, but no real fruity ester, uh, mostly just phenolics. Uh, you're getting that clove character, but it's giving you a really nice, strong, spicy, herbal cloviness. Now that I think about it too, it's got a little bit of banana. So maybe there's a little bit of fruit in it. The overall flavor of this thing is tremendous though. There's so many different things coming out. We get a nice earthy hoppiness to it. Um, and I think part of that also comes from the dark grains that I used. I'm also just getting loads of raisiny character in this, like a lighter raisin though than your typical Belgian strong ale. Uh, normally those are gonna be throwing some more like dark raisin and fig character. This is throwing a lighter raisin character. 
I think the reason for that is the uh, lighter shade of candy syrup that I used, specifically that D45 being a little bit less intense in the raisiny character department, but giving you that character nonetheless. Yeah, there's definitely a floral note in this. Definitely a little bit of spice. It's got a significant amount of earthiness to it, but it blends it in really well. Sometimes I'm not a big fan of the earthy character that can come out of beers like this, but in this case, I am absolutely a huge fan. It blends tremendously well. And then there's a really, really nice rich maltiness to it. Um, you know, you're getting a little bit of a caramel character, but it's not sweet, it's dry. Um, you're getting a really nice, soft, doughy, bready, grainy note at the end. Um, which is your base malt. And man, that just turned out really nice. The alcohol level in this beer is certainly high enough to give you a little bit of satisfying malty sweetness. Um, and it certainly helps elevate some of the malt character in the beer itself. That being said, it's certainly not overpowering in the sweetness and it doesn't take the beer out of balance. It's still decidedly a very dry beer as it should be. And to me, this feels Saison like. All in all, this beer is really interesting. It was so much fun to make, and it took its time maturing, and I'm glad I let it, because it's really a perfect beer for this time of year. It's cold enough right now for me to wear a jacket, and this beer has enough heartiness and soul to it, really, to uh, carry me through that, that colder weather. Uh, but in a few days, of course, it'll be much warmer, much, much, much warmer. And it still is light enough, and dry enough, and drinkable enough to be enjoyed in warmer weather, despite being 8%. Belgians are magical in that way, in that they can be consumed in hot weather and still be very, very strong beers. All in all, I'm extraordinarily happy with this beer. It has one of the most complex flavor palettes out of beers that I've made recently, and you know, those are my favorite ones. Is when you come at this, you come up with this really intense recipe and it has so many different moving parts to it. And sometimes that can mean the beer comes out really muddled and not sure of its identity. But this one, all of the flavors sing together. They all support each other. They all play into each other. And it's such a, such a rewarding feeling. Um, and such a rewarding flavor. This is definitely one of my best beers as of late. And it's one that I certainly intend to keep an eye on as it ages and continues to mature and develop and probably evolve in its flavor as well. Uh, so certainly something that is going to be fun to continue to watch. As far as potential improvements go for this one, can't think of any. This is actually really exactly what I had in my mind when I thought Dark Saison. Uh, and I do not intend to change a thing about it. The de Blaugy yeast strain that's in this is easily the centerpiece of the beer's flavor. It's what ties it all together. Um, and I think what was key to getting as much out of that yeast as I did was that open fermentation. Um, and it's something that I don't do often and certainly uh, feels very risky when it's done in a kind of damp basement um, <laughs> setting, but it worked out really, really well in this case. And I'm very glad that I did take that risk because uh, I think I would not have gotten nearly as much yeast flavor out of this beer if I hadn't open fermented it and maybe the fermentation would have been a bit different but all in all very satisfied with it and yeah that's all I got to say about that. Guys, if you found this video useful, entertaining, if you learned something from it, please go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I got plenty more videos like this one coming out. I'm continuing to improve my production quality and the beer quality as well. And I've got plenty more beers coming out in the next several weeks. So certainly please keep your eyes peeled on the channel. There will be future content coming out on the regular. Comment down below, please, with your thoughts and opinions on the whole thing. This is certainly a neat beer style. It's one that people don't brew all that much. Um, and I'm kind of curious if you guys Guys have done something similar and if so how did you do it if you want to support the channel please consider picking up a t-shirt like this one you can get this design and plenty of others down in the merchandise store which is located in the description box there's a link that'll take you over to teespring there you can find plenty of other things that will uh, help support the channel and you get something out of the process as well I also have a Patreon, and my patrons are the reason why I can upgrade the production quality of the channel. Not only am I working with two cameras, but I'm also working with two lenses here that are also brand new, and I think things have really taken quite the uh, step forward in terms of production quality. None of that would have been possible without the help of my patrons, so you have my sincere thanks. If Patreon's not your thing, though, you can also support the channel with channel memberships, and also there's the super thanks button, which you can hit quickly and easily to make a quick donation. I also have an Amazon store, which is linked down in the description box, where you can find not only the channel's production equipment, but also a lot of the brewing equipment that I use on the regular and can recommend and is available on Amazon. So check that out if you're curious. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on social media as The Apartment Brewer. That's for Instagram and Facebook. Plenty of additional content there in addition to the YouTube videos that you're watching right now. 
And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching the entire video. These things take a long time to produce and they are fit within a very busy schedule. So it means a lot to me that you're watching the whole thing, that you're getting something out of it. And uh, to me, that's all I want out of these things myself is for people to learn from them and enjoy them. And if you're watching the whole thing, that means that you did. So this one goes out to you and I will catch you all in the next one. So until then, cheers. That's good. That's really good. <laughs>